ಆಯುಕ್ತ ರಾಮಲಿಂಗೇಗೌಡ ಪ್ರೊಫೆಸರ್ ಆಫ್ ಪೀಡಿಯಾಟ್ರಿಕ್ಸ್ ಆಕ್ಸ್ಫರ್ಡ್ ಮೆಡಿಕಲ್ ಕಾಲೇಜ್ ಬ್ಯಾಂಗ್ಳೂರ್ ಗುಡ್ ಆಫ್ಟರ್ನೂನ್ ಟುಡೇಸ್ ಟಾಪಿಕ್ ಈಸ್ ಅಕ್ಯೂಟ್ ಬ್ಯಾಕ್ಟೀರಿಯಲ್ ಮೆನಂಜೈಟಿಸ್ ಇನ್ ಚಿಲ್ಡ್ರನ್ ದಿ ಡೆಫಿನೇಷನ್ ಆಫ್ ಮೆನಂಜೈಟಿಸ್ ಈಸ್ ದಿ ಇನ್ಫ್ಲಮೇಷನ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ಮೆಂಬ್ರೇನ್ಸ್ ಸರೌಂಡಿಂಗ್ ದ ಬ್ರೈನ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದಿ ಸ್ಪೈನಲ್ ಕಾರ್ಡ್ ಇನ್ಕ್ಲೂಡಿಂಗ್ ದ ಡ್ಯೂರಾ ಅರಕ್ನಾಯ್ಡ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಪಯಾಮೆಂಟ್ Acute bacterial infection is considered as, as a serious infection, especially in children, because it is a growing brain. Even a small uh, damage results in major sequelae and the incidence of death is also more. Uh, meningitis can occur at all ages. It is more so in uh, children, especially yeah, yeah. the child is less than 5 years. and of course the incidence is much more if it is less than 2 years as they as they they have immature immune system to fight it is more common in males than females the epidemiology uh, the not only bacteria the meningitis uh, other neuro infection can be caused by the virus fungi parasites uh, tuberculosis and sometimes chemical syndromes also the organisms vary from one age group to another age even among children even among children below 3 months the organisms which are there in the mother's uh, um, birth canal like group b streptococcus are mm. uh, the organisms like e coli are responsible for um, uh, neonatal meningitis after 3 months it is streptococcus pneumonia followed by neisseria meningitis and uh, gbs gram negative bacilli after 3 years it is streptococcus pneumonia and neisseria meningitis after 10 years it is neisseria meningitis the importance of knowing the different organisms or different age group is to start the appropriate antibiotic initially before we get um, the culture and sensitivity report of the csf at the plate the transmission you the bacteria are transmitted from person to person through droplets of respiratory uh, or throat secretion close and prolonged contact uh, is um, responsible for uh, spread of the infection uh work routing uh school scratches um are responsible for the spread of the infection the incubation varies from 2 to 10 days uh, routes of infection it is first colonization of constituent nasa pharynx from there you know it goes to the blood stream sometimes you know from there blood stream it goes to the um, uh, central nervous system sometimes when there is a fracture of the skull direct uh, um, infection can occur mm-hmm. and uh, the same thing with uh, when it, when the child has meningoencephalocele uh, when it is infected uh, mid ear infection from there you know it is easy the infection to spread into the central system and um, congenital defects if the child has the immune defect or the hematological defect sinusitis of course from there you know through the sinuses that uh, the uh, because of the proximity it can spread into the central uh, central nervous system easily the pathogenesis the entire the organism through the blood uh, brain barrier release of the cell wall and membrane produce the products uh, resulting in uh, outpouring of polymers and the fibrin cytokines are released inflammation is sets in the sets in then inflammatory meninges covered with the exudate most marked in pneumococcal meningitis among all the infections pneumococcus is uh, the dangerous uh, infection earlier we h influenza and h influenza vaccine is uh, now you know uh, throughout the country is given so Uh, uh the severe infection now 
uh, is seen with uh, pneumococci than H. influenza. Um, the meningeal irritation uh, signs are uh, inflammation of the spinal nerves and roots uh, because of the exudates and uh, adhesive thickening um, of the arachnoid and uh, at the basal uh, system and uh, fibrosis of the aqueductal, for, uh, aqueductal or foramina of Lasca and meningeal hydrocephalus, cerebral atrophy due to thrombosis of the vessels, seizure uh, due to new, uh, depolarization of the neuronal membrane, then there may be decreased uh, glucose into the uh, brain due to uh, the decreased transport of the uh, transport across the inflamed choroid plexus. As I told you, the meningitis can occur not only with the bacteria, the viral, fungal, parasitic, non-infectious. Uh, signs and symptoms. In older children, it might start like a flu-like symptoms with fever, usually high degree, child is lethargic, uh, there may be an altered consciousness and child is definitely irritable, you can make out headache, vomiting, photophobia, refusal of feeds, not interested in play, an examination you can make out uh, neck stiffness, Brudzinski uh, neck and leg sign may be positive uh, and there may be skin rashes you see in some bacterial infections like pneumococci and H. influenza there may be skin rashes and some children may present with seizures. But in younger children like neonates and infants the manifestation is little different. There you know the main thing is you can see the alteration in their behavior in terms of um, refusal of feeds most of the time. They don't show interest for the feeds. And if child is uh, very uh, young, apnea can manifest. And jaundice, neck rigidity only after one year. And the temperature instead of uh, in uh, small children, Instead of fever, there may be a hypothermia. Uh, as I told you, poor feeding, irritable. They may, uh, they also might have vomiting, and an examination, bulging fontanel, uh, bulging fontanel, and reflexes may be poor. See, this is the uh, Kernick sign. Here you see the hip, hip is uh, flexed, then leg is extended knee is extended and when it is extended because of the spinal uh, roots are pulled so the child experiences pain and here it is the Brudzinski neck sign when the neck is bent when the neck is bent the hips are flexed this is called Brudzinski head sign and there is one more uh, Brudzinski leg sign where the hip when the hip is flexed the other hip is also be Flexed automatically. Investigations. And you should, uh, when the, uh, before we go to the in investigation, you should thoroughly examine the child uh, for source of infection. Throat, skin, and you should strip the child nude, then examine, there may be a PTK in the um, nappy area. So, the child should be stripped naked and examination to be done. Especially in meningococcal meningitis, it is such a severe infection. So, the one, there may be one particular that gives the clue. By evening, if you don't make a diagnosis, one, within 24 hours, the child can go into coma and death. Such a severe infection in meningococci. So, coming to the investigation, you have to do the blood examination and... Uh, uh, culture, CBC, gram staining, electrolytes, um, coagulation profile, liver, kidney, uh, fun uh, function test, um, if necessary, if respiratory infection, chest x-ray, and for a clear uh, this thing, you know, um, uh, uh, 
understanding of the managerial uh, uh, infection so sometimes ct and mri may be required blood gases eeg and ecg depending upon the need the most important among all the investigation is sen lumbar puncture without lumbar puncture no treatment should be instituted unless if there is some contraindication you can start empirically then later you can do the lp what do you see in the lp cf is drawn pressure you look for physical chemical then microscopic physical is it clear what is the pressure is the turbid and your uh, microscopy leukocyte is it polymers or lymphocytes and uh, uh, chemical glucose protein then uh, uh, chlorides crp to be done gram staining of the uh, uh, to be done and culture and sensitivity of the csr that is more important so based on that you know so we have to choose a right antibiotic then these are the contraindication for lp in such wherever there is a contraindication so you start the drug depending upon the organism you suspect as we have discussed in the earlier slide then later you can do the uh, lp uh, and confirm uh, the type of the organism and the antibiotic required so what are the contraindications for lp increase intracranial pressure unstable patient uh, if there is a skin, a skin infection at the site of the lumbar puncture thrombocytopenia papillary so here is the csf examination in a normal csf what you see is wbc less than 5 and all are lymphocytes glucose 2 to 52 50% to 6 50% to uh, 75% or 2/3 of the uh, blood glucose level that is uh, 45 to 50 65 mg per deciliter protein which is in the range of 20 to 45 gram stain is negative so it is a normal csf uh, in bacterial the wbc counts are usually in terms of thousands ranging from 100 to 1 lakh initially it is polymorphs predominantly polymorphs only in the later stages lymphocytes but otherwise it is polymorphs 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 glucose very much low because the organism utilizes the glucose in the csf protein elevated gram stain may be positive in the viral the cells are increased but not to the extent of bacterial meningitis it is in the range of 50 to 1000 glucose phenomenally normal that's how we you know you can differentiate bacterial from viral protein may be slightly raised and gram negative uh, strain gram stain is negative tuberculosis the cells are uh, increased they are also in only in hundreds not in thousands and the glucose is reduced but not as low as in bacteria protein is definitely higher than bacterial then gram stain is negative so the other test done are latex uh, particulate agglutination test to detect the presence of bacterial antigen of the common organisms like h influenzae streptococcus pneumoniae neisseria menseries e coli and etc concurrent immuno electrophoresis rapid detection test for h influenzae streptococcus pneumoniae and meningitis and whenever there is a skin uh, purpuric spots you take uh, the scraping and uh, prepare the smear look for meningococci in meningococcal cocci 
and RT-PCR wherever facilities are available to detect the um, gene sequence, DNA sequence so that you know um, easy to make a diagnosis. In the CSF two things are very important CRP and culture sensitivity should not be should not be forgotten. Coming to the treatment, there is there are two types of treatment. One is supported treatment, another is specific treatment. Supported treatment is to maintain the fluid and dilute balance as required. Transfuse whole blood or packed red cell uh, cells or uh, fresh frozen plasma or platelets as required depending upon the need and temperature should be maintained with the antipyretics and uh, tepid spongy monitor vital signs and coming to the um, specific treatment antibiotics uh, the antibiotics duration is one to three weeks depending upon the type of the organisms we are dealing with initially one before giving antibiotic specific treatment one dose of steroid is preferred in bacterial meningitis especially dexamethasone especially in the in case if the causative organism is h influenza we don't know whether it is h influenza so one dose is given that will prevent the damage especially to the eighth nerve sensory sensory neural deafness uh, incidence will come down if one dose of dexamethasone is used the outcome will be good so coming to the uh, treatment as i mentioned earlier uh, to get the culture sensitivity we require at least uh, three to four days okay and and culture sensitivity report we cannot wait we have to start antibiotic early depending uh, upon uh, the type of the depending upon the type of the organism that is based on the age uh, age of the child so we can predict the organism and we have to choose the organism we have to choose the antibiotic to cover those organisms if you think that if it is neonate there we know that it is uh, group B streptococci and uh, the gram negative. So you have to start a gram the antibiotic which covers one gram positive and gram ampicillin and gentamicin. One to cover gram negative, another to cover gram positive. And if it is, uh, if you think that you know. Uh, meningococci that is in the old children you have to start penicillin 2 to 5 lakhs units per kg per day then if h influenza in younger children you have to start third generation cephalosporin like gentacephaloxin higher dose 200 milligram per kg per day and ampicillin or sometimes you know you may have to give uh, ampicillin um, because sometimes in younger children, uh, listeria, monocytogens, uh, that is covered only by ampicillin. If it is E. coli, as I told you, that is in the, this thing, uh, gram negative and gram positive, we have to start both. So we don't know organism, but gentamicin covers the E. coli. Then if it is a group B streptococci, penicillin. 50,000 international units per kg IV, 4 tablet. Then, when the report comes, culture report, so depending upon the culture sensitivity report, you know, we can uh, uh, switch over to the appropriate drug for the rest of the uh, treatment period. So, coming to the complications many many complications we can anticipate it depending upon if the complications the complications are 
more the, the complications are more if the diagnosis is delayed and the treatment is not instituted early they are cranial nerve palsies subdural empyema brain abscess hearing loss uh, maybe hydrocephalus Uh, parenchymal damage that may result in uh, learning disabilities behavioral disorder cerebral palsy seizure disorder mental retardation endocrineal problems the child can have uh, associated septic shock may go into dic ataxia uh, can develop stroke sidh uh, syndrome of inappropriate antidiuretic hormone where the blood is diluted because of excessive water reabsorption from the kidney sodium is less than 130 we have to do water restriction here in case if that is diagnosed if there is a convulsion diazepam fourth hourly you can give and um, if there is a cerebral edema monitor or iv dexamethasone can be used subdural effusion i want to uh, emphasize one point here that we have started the treatment child showed response uh, response in the how do you say there is a response to the drug you have started the fever has come down that is a good clinical marker vomiting stops chain irritability uh, comes down child starts showing interest for food sleeps well these are the indications clinical marker to assess the uh, re- response such a child which has shown uh, initial response and if it again develops fever vomiting and other symptoms one should suspect the subdural effusion in acute bacterial meningitis and that if it is large that has to be removed or aspirated so if it is in the shock so treat that with iv fluids and maintain the bp if there is an sidh restrictive fluids to 800 to 1000 ml per meter square for 24 hours and if there is hyper hyperpyroxia uh, the fever to be brought down by rapid sponging and antipyretics the prognosis depends upon the age of the child the nutritional status of the child and how early the diagnosis is made and the treatment is started and what is the organism responsible for the infection it is not one factor it is a multifactor uh unlike um, bacterial viral meningitis is uh, very good uh, prognosis in bacterial meningitis the prognosis is uh, always you know it is uh, um, not that good especially when the treatment is uh, delayed and as i told you the uh, patient age is less less than 2 years the prognosis is not that good and at the same and another uh, clinical marker is if the child is uh, having a, a impaired consciousness when it is uh, presented to the hospital uh, then also the prognosis is somewhat not good a seizure again not a good sign and uh, in such cases you know the prognosis is 
um, uh, not as good as without in a child without seizure acute uh, bacterial meningitis is a medical emergency and delays in instituting effective and antimicrobial therapy result in increased morbidity and mortality wherever uh, there is an immunocompromised uh, state and opportunity uh, pathogens are there then also the prognosis is not good mm-hmm. coming to the very important uh, aspect of the prevention of this meningitis so we have to promote the health of the child how to promote we have to give good nutrition what i want to say is breast feeding initially then uh, complementary feeds balanced food later to ensure proper growth and development so that it can maintain reasonably good immunity then second a uh, vaccines to prevent these infections especially hip measles mumps polio meningococcus pneumococcus all vaccines are available and uh, we should be grateful to government that almost all these vaccines are given by the government to all children in india there is a schedule for hip vaccine you please go through and also pneumococcal and all the children should get this this benefit should go on to all the children and the organisms uh, uh, mentioned here in this slide you know they all can cause meningitis so all uh, these vaccine to be given without fail uh, to all children in india the high risk children those who are having comorbid conditions like chronic renal failure chronic renal problem renal failure leukemia that is malignancy other hematological problem or immune deficiency disorder of any kind splenectomy to children uh, complementary deficiency uh, 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 children or nephrotic syndrome renal as i mentioned these are considered as high risk group in them you know these infections are more and they should be given immunization um uh, without uh what i mean to say is uh, there they should be given the, the, the first priority to be given to these children than even normal children and of course if you are uh, traveling to an endemic area uh, take vaccine and go whichever the disease is prevailing in that area that vaccine to be taken well in advance then only you have to go to that place and if there is an history of contact a susceptible without taking say for example a child has not taken the vaccine but it is exposed to uh, the uh, another child with h influenza uh, h influenza uh, that is hemophilus influenza type b infection uh, when that happens you know you have to give Uh, rifampicin 20 mg per kg per day for 4 days if the child has uh, got extra of exposure with neisseria meningitis uh, rifampicin has to be given 600 mg orally cell told orally for 2 days uh, and sometimes up to 10 weeks so the other alternate uh, uh, prophylaxis uh, treatment is subtraction one dose 250 mg im or ciprofloxacin one dose 500 to 750 mg single dose depending upon the weight of the child so before i conclude the acute bacterial meningitis is a medical emergency if 
it is not diagnosed and treatment is not instituted early the sequelae are going to be more death is also more in this uh, when when the treatment is not started early the incidence of death is also more <laughs> and uh, the usual saying is prevention is better than cure instead of treating meningitis we should prevent them getting meningitis uh, even uh, normal ch- all normal children should be given vaccines good nutrition and high risk children should be give, we should give uh, uh, priority to give vaccines the why why i am telling the priority means they are the one at more uh, more at risk to develop this infection so we have to cover them with the vaccine first and we have to avoid mixing with the um, crowd uh, so that uh, so they don't contract the disease uh, easily and if there is a, a history of contact with the um, any meningitis uh, case with these organism they should be given chemo prophylaxis so that it can prevent uh, uh, infection occurring in them so thank you <laughs>